This is Funky Worms, and this is my computer security primer for Poker Players series. Um, in this video, I'm going to be covering full disk encryption, otherwise known as whole disk encryption. So, just jump right into it and talk about uh, what full disk encryption is. Uh, I think most people have a general idea of what encryption is. Uh, it keeps your data secure when traveling over the network, such as when you connect to poker sites or your email, hopefully. Uh, it basically obfuscates the, uh, the data as it's sent over the wire uh, so that only authorized people can uh, see it. Um, but we're not going to focus on encrypted data over networks. We're going to actually encrypt your hard drive. So, what does full disk encryption do? Basically, it makes it so that only authenticated users are able to boot your system and see your files. Uh, that means that if your hard drive is ever stolen, uh, the data on your hard drive will be unreadable. Uh, the only exception is if the person who steals your hard drive has a ton of money, a ton of skill, and a ton of time. And usually, it's not going to be worth their time, uh, if they can even uh, get access to your data, which they probably won't be able to. Okay, so what full disk encryption won't do? It won't protect you from malware, keyloggers, viruses, trojans. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, you need to protect your own system from those things. Uh, it won't protect your privacy if you leave your computer turned on while you're away. Uh, once you boot your computer, if you're using system encryption, uh, your computer will be unencrypted until you turn it off, uh, at least for your system drive. Uh, it is possible to, to encrypt non-system drives. Uh, it won't encrypt data transmitted over the internet. That's handled by a different protocol. And so any data that was in plain text before will be in plain text now, even with an encrypted hard drive. And any data that was sent encrypted will still be sent encrypted. Uh, it will not encrypt data stored on an unencrypted volume. That means if you send your buddy something from your hard drive, it won't magically be encrypted and uh, on his hard drive. So there are also some possible disadvantages of full disk encryption uh, in that you may experience longer boot times. Uh, it shouldn't be significantly longer. You might have reduced uh, I.O. performance. That's your hard drive performance, although it should not be noticeable for you. Uh, this might be noticeable for people who are using their hard drive heavily for things such as gaming. Uh, uh, it also requires a password on every boot. Uh, this is actually part of the security feature of full disk encryption, but some people might see it as a disadvantage. And another disadvantage is that if you forget this password, then you can pretty much kiss your data goodbye. Uh, that's the built-in security that if someone doesn't know the password, they have no access to the hard drive. So, do not forget your password. Okay, so who is this video for? It's for people who use Windows XP, Vista, or the full version of Windows 7. TrueCrypt will not work with the release candidate of Windows 7. Uh, I'm not aware of any workarounds, but they could exist. It's for people who have a single partition on their system disk. Uh, so if you're running a multi-boot system, or you have multiple partitions on your system disk, then you'll have to tweak this a little bit. And it's also for single boot systems. If you're running multiple operating systems on the same disk or across multiple disks, you'll have to tweak uh, this video some. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, get to encrypting our system drive. Uh, we're going to be using TrueCrypt 
for this. And it's available at truecrypt.org. Uh, the install is fairly simple, but I will guide you through it. You just double click the installer and run it. Uh, TrueCrypt is free and somewhat open source. Uh, we don't want to read the tutorial and TrueCrypt has been installed. Okay, so you double click the TrueCrypt icon. Uh, we go to System, Encrypt System Partition or Drive. We want to do a normal and we want to encrypt the whole drive. Uh, we want to encrypt the host protected area. Uh, if you have a Dell, HP, uh, I think Toshiba, uh, basically if you have a main, you know, big manufacturer laptop, you might have a host protected area where it keeps your recovery partition. Uh, but TrueCrypt will look for one. And if it detects one, you may want to just encrypt the uh, the system partition and not the entire system drive. So it's a single boot system, as I said before. Uh, we just use the default encryption algorithms. And for the purpose of this video, let's see. That will be my password. Uh, it recommends a password of... 20 or more characters. Uh, this is actually, I inputted a quite strong password. Uh, if you really want to do 20 or more characters, that's okay. Uh, but I'm going to proceed with my short password here. Okay, so collecting random data. There we go. Okay, now uh, it's going to require you to. Uh, create a TrueCrypt rescue disk. This is in case your um, boot sector becomes damaged. It will. It's essentially putting a boot sector onto a disk so that you can boot from that disk and have access to your hard drive uh, if your boot sector becomes damaged. So we have to burn this uh, this ISO file that is put into here. That's true true crypt rescue disk ISO. We have to burn that to a disk and then put it and put it in the drive. And once TrueCrypt detects that it's in the drive, uh, then it will let us proceed. If we click next, it'll say that the TrueCrypt rescue disk has not been correctly burned. Okay, as you can see I have my TrueCrypt rescue disk. I've burnt it and put it in the C D drive. You can see it right here. And then now I can click next and it says the rescue disk has been verified. Okay, so I'm just going to do a none white mode. You can choose to do a three pass or a 35 pass. Uh, keep in mind if you try to do a 35 pass, it's going to take a very, very, very long time to encrypt your drive. Uh, about 36 times as long as doing none. So I'll click next. And it's going to do a pretest, which will restart my computer and make sure everything is working correctly. So here we go. Yes. Okay, so this is what the screen looks like uh, when TrueCrypt boots up. You got to enter your password. and then Windows will start like normal. Okay, once your computer boots back up, uh, hopefully it says pretest completed and that it's been successfully completed. And then you can start encrypting. And uh, so you'll see how long it's going to take, uh, about 20 minutes to encrypt this drive. Uh, the status can change from encrypting to waiting depending on how much activity you have going on on your computer. But I'm going to let this encrypt and I will see you in part two of this video to wrap it up.